Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician, and on this video, we're gonna take another look at the elimination method to help us solve a system of equations. Now over here on the left side, I have my system. I see my two equations. My first one up here is 2x plus 7y equals 13. My bottom equation is 2x plus 3y equals 5. And we want to see, can we use the elimination method to help us solve this equation? Now, remembering from my last video, the biggest step, the major step for the elimination method is to combine both of those equations. And we do that by adding them together. We put a plus sign, we put a big equal sign underneath, and we add them together, hoping that one of the variables will drop out. So let's see what happens here. My constants are going to add together. So 13 plus five, that becomes 18. Bring down the equal sign. I have seven y's plus three y's. Well, seven y's plus three y's will make 10 y. And then I have two x's plus two x's, which, uh-oh, does not cancel out. And I'm left with the equation four x plus 10y equals 18. Now, this is a point where the elimination method is failing us. Remember, we want to add the two equations together so that one of the variables will drop out. Either the x's will zero out or the y's will zero out so that we can solve for one of the variables. But that didn't happen here. We added the y's, we added the x's, and nothing canceled out. So that means that we need to manipulate one of the equations first before we combine them. And here's what I mean by that. It would be really, really nice if one of these x's here were negative, right? If I had this bottom equation as a negative 2x, then when I did 2x plus negative 2x, they would turn into 0x and the x's would drop out, right? It would be super helpful if we could make that x value down there a negative. And here's the new fact that I'm gonna tell you is that we can. We can make this 2x down here negative, but before we do that, we're going to have to take that bottom equation and we're gonna need to multiply it by negative one. I'm gonna multiply it by negative one so that every term here is going to change its sign. Every sign here is gonna be flipped. If it was positive, it's negative. If it was negative, it's positive. I do that so that I can get these X's over here to cancel. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna take this equation, I'm just gonna move it over here to the side, right? because I'm transforming it. I'm not adding them together just yet. I'm taking that bottom equation and I'm multiplying it by negative one. So that means the two X down here, when multiplied by negative one, that will become negative two X. The positive three Y will be multiplied by negative one. So that will turn into negative three Y. Finally, that'll be equal to five times the negative one which is now negative five. Now, as you see, all I've done is taken that bottom equation, multiplied every single term by negative one. I did that, so now when I write the other equation on top, you'll see that the x's are now lined up, same coefficient, they both start with two, but now one's positive and one's negative. That is a total legal move that we can do when we're using the elimination method. We're not changing the value of this equation at all. We're just changing the signs to manipulate it so that when I do put the big plus sign and I do put the big equal sign, now when I add these two variables together, 2x plus negative 2x, they will zero out. Now I can start solving this equation and seeing how we can get rid of that x variable. Now look, I have seven y's plus negative three y's, 
So 7 plus negative 3, that would become a 4y, equals 13 plus negative 5. Well, 13 take away 5 will just become an 8. So now you see I have a single equation where I have one variable, my x is dropped out, now I can solve for this equation. So let's go ahead and do that. It's now going to follow the same exact way the other video took us. I'm going to divide both sides by that coefficient of 4. I do that. Those 4's on the left simplify to 1. So now I know that y equals 2. 8 divided by 4 equals 2. Alrighty, I know my y value. Now all I have to do is find my x value. So again, I just need to pick one of these equations to use. It doesn't matter which one. And I don't have to worry about the negative one anymore. I can just focus on the equation inside. So I'm actually going to use the one on the bottom. It looks like it has smaller numbers. So hopefully it ends up being a little easier. So I'm going to rewrite that. 2x plus 3y equals 5. But we know what y is. We know that y equals 2. So when I rewrite this equation now, I won't write the y variable. I'll write that y equals 2. So let's go ahead and solve this now. Let's see. Bring down the 2x. 3 times 2 becomes a 6 equals 5. All right, we're still moving along here. I'm going to subtract that constant on both sides. Those 6's zero out. We're bringing down the 2x equals 5 minus 6 becomes a negative 1. Let's go ahead and divide by that coefficient of 2. It becomes a simplified version of 1. So I'm left with x equals negative 1 divided by 2. I'm going to leave that as a fraction. If you wanted to, you could change that into a decimal, which would be negative 0.5. Either is acceptable here. So now we know that these two equations are going to intersect at the point negative 1 half comma 2. Or if you want to write it as a decimal, the decimal version would be negative 0.5 comma 2. That is our answer. That is where those two lines are going to intersect. Now, a word of caution. Whenever we write our coordinate point, we always write x and then y. Now, we solved for y first. So a big mistake that students often make is when they write this out, they write the 2 first and then they write the x value. That would be incorrect. We always want to write our x value first and then our y value. All right, guys, it's that math magician, and I'll see you on the next video.